test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the newest in the Men and Mice webinar trilogy. Uh, this is the third in the series of Rethinking Name Resolution in Local Networks. Today, we're going to be talking about local name, excuse me, local name resolution on Unix networks. Uh, my name is Paul Terrell. I will be your host. I'm here with my colleague, Carson Strotman, who will be doing the presentation. I'll say hi, Carson. Hello, everybody. Carson here. So this, like all our webinars, will be recorded, and all attendees will receive a copy of the recording. It will also be posted up to our website. Uh, I will be taking questions as, as we go along. So please, you, you don't have to wait till the end. There is a question functionality in the, the GoToWebinar. So feel free to ask as we go along. I will compile them and present them to, uh, to Carson at the end uh, so he can address them. Uh, just a little background on Men and Mice. We do uh, a number of these webinar series, uh, technical in nature. Uh, Men and Mice has been around since 1990. Uh, focusing in the DNS, uh, DHCP, and IP management space mostly. Uh, we're actually one of the longest uh, players in this market, and we've got a wholly unique solution. Uh, it's a software overlay providing centralized management of your entire infrastructure. So I welcome you to go out to menandmice.com and check out our products. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand control over to Carson again. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along. And again, this will be recorded. So take it away, Carson. Thank you, Paul. So hello. This is the third of our trilogy. And this time we look at uh, on the uh, Unix part, uh, which also um, includes Apple's macOS and iOS because they are based on the Unix foundation. So in the, the, the last two webinars, we looked on Windows with uh, link local multicast name resolution and peer-to-peer -peer name resolution. And uh, the webinar before on the namespaces that can be used for local name resolution. And here we go and uh, have a look on multicast DNS. Now multicast DNS is now an internet standard. It has been around for a long, long time. Um, it was first implemented by Apple in macOS 10.2. That was back in 2002. So it's, uh, it's around for 15 years now. And it has been standardized as an RFC in February 2013. And together with the service discovery, DNS-based service discovery, it is the base of the Apple Bonjour service that is being used by all Apple products. However, it is not purely an Apple thing. It has also been implemented in other operating system, namely in the Linux operating system under the name of Avahi and uh, alternatively as the MDNS responder. It is available for the BSD operating systems, all of them, meaning FreeBSD, NetBSD, Dragonfly BSD and OpenBSD and all the other small BSDs that uh, are around like GhostBSD and so on. Um, then uh, it is in Solaris, uh, both the official Solaris that comes from Oracle and also the uh, descendants of uh, Open Solaris called Illuminus these, these days. It has or it is implemented in Android phones since uh, version 4.1. And as nobody should run such an old Android version anymore, uh, everyone running and having an Android handset will probably have multicast DNS in there. And now even Microsoft um, has found some use for multicast DNS, despite having their own protocols. Windows 10 has some limited support built in. We cover that a little bit later in this webinar. And both Windows 7 and Windows 8 can be made multicast DNS enabled by some add-on software that can be installed free of charge. There is an extra website for multicast DNS called www.multicastdns.org. And multicast DNS listens on port 5353, that is 5353, uh, while normal DNS is just port 53. And because it's a multicast service, it listens on special addresses on IPv4, that's the 2240251 address. And in the IPv6, in the modern uh, address space, it's FFO2 colon colon FB. 
So by design, multicast DNS is confined to a single subnet. It has been designed to work for ad hoc networks, for local um, networks like in one office space or in a home network. But uh, from the early beginning, people started to build bridges um, to help multicast DNS to be uh, crossing routers, especially nowadays as we have uh, Ethernet-based networks and also wireless networks, um, we want to have the same view on the namespace on the multicast DNS. We have the we want to have the resolution both in the wireless space and in the Ethernet-based space. That is the wired one. Um, so there is a couple of products and also um, protocol standards in the making of how such a relay or proxy could work. And I've collected here both the currently worked on drafts in the ITF and three uh, implementations that can be used already today. So here's uh, um, how multicast DNS works. We have a couple of um, PCs running multicast DNS. There's a Windows 10 PC, a Linux PC, an iMac with Apple macOS, a free BSD PC, and there's a wireless router that has an MDNS proxy, and then there is a phone somewhere connected to the wireless network. And the Mac machine, the Apple machine, is asking for the address, the IPv4 address of linuxpc.local. Now, the top-level domain .local has been set aside for multicast DNS and is reserved for this protocol. It should not be used for any other purpose. So especially it should not be used for any normal DNS operations because it's multicast DNS. And uh, if there's a query coming in to the operating system ending in the top level domain dot local, the operating system knows that this is for multicast DNS and will not send the query out via normal DNS to the resolvers. Instead, it will send uh, a multicast query and that multicast query is being received by all devices in the network that have multicast DNS enabled. That query goes out to all the machines and just the one machine that owns the name will send an answer back. So here we have the Linux PC answering that, oh, I'm the Linux PC and I have IP address 192.0.2.10. <coughs> On the wire, uh, multicast DNS is essentially normal DNS just over multicast addresses. So we can use familiar tools like the dig command to query for multicast DNS names. And here's an example, looking up a name, uh, which is p.mail.local, which happened to be my mail server here in uh, my network. Uh, I use dig. I have to use the parameter minus p for port number and then 5,353 as a port number, and then the uh, the at sign and the multicast IP address to 2400251, and then ask there. So in contrast to normal DNS, where I sent the query to one specific server, I'm here not addressing a specific server, I'm addressing the multicast address, and that query will actually be seen by all the machines that take part in the multicast DNS service. And the answer here is coming back that uh, this p2mail.local has the IP address 172.22.1.8 and dig in the latest version, which is 9.11.2, will also inform me with a warning that .local is reserved for multicast DNS, which is fine because I'm using this here for multicast DNS. Um, but it will complain anyway because uh, to inform people who use .local in their normal DNS operations. So yeah, DIG is smart in telling us that .local is reserved for multicast DNS. We can also do reserve lookup. That works the same way as in traditional DNS, asking for the PTR record and the IP address reversed. With DIG, we can have a shortcut by using the minus X parameter and then the IP address in just forward written way, the normal way, and uh, the DIG tool will then automatically wrap that around and uh, give us the answer. Um, if you look at the server line on the bottom on the footer of the answer, we will see the machine that has actually sent the answer. 
uh, in parentheses, we have the IP address of the machine that has been requested, which is the multicast address. But then the address in the front of that, 192.0.2.8, that's actually address of the machine that sent the answer, which is most of the time the machine that owns the address. We can query for all other kind of resource records. And multicast DNS supports almost all the normal resource records that we know from DNS. Here, we've sent a request for H info, which is the resource record for host info, which is normally not used in traditional DNS, but makes perfectly sense in the area of multicast DNS. Well, we can request here the architecture and the operating system of, uh, of a remote machine. And this machine here answering is actually an ARM64 machine. It's a Raspberry Pi 3 running Linux. So this is the general way how MDNS works. And now we look on one specific implementation, which, which is the oldest one, uh, Apple Bonjour, because Apple invented the whole stuff. But they were kind enough to make it open source and bring it to the ITF to standardize that in an open way so that now all the other either uh, open source or proprietary operating systems are free to implement this stuff. Uh, it was introduced in macOS 10.2 in 2002 under the name of Rendezvous. And it was later renamed to Bonjour because there was another company already using the, the, um, the name Rendezvous in the networking sense. and uh, um, Apple stepped back and renamed their product uh, to uh, to Bonjour. Uh, and Bonjour implements multicast DNS together with DNS service discovery. Now, DNS service discovery is a whole new big area, and we could do an ex a whole webinar just on, uh, or even two, just on the DNS service discovery, and we might do that at a later time. Uh, so, in this webinar, I will focus on multicast DNS not so much on the DNS service discovery. However, because it's so interwoven with each other, I, we will see some uh, DNS SD in the demos. And multicast DNS on macOS and on iOS is used in many applications like iTunes, iChat, iPhoto, Safari, Terminal application. And it's used to, to find services on the network. So if you, in iTunes, uh, publish your music uh, collection to the outside world, and others can browse your music collection and then start streaming it. That's multicast DNS at work that you see there. So, uh, as one would expect, Bonjour with multicast DNS installed and enabled on def by default on all Apple systems, and it usually works without any issues. If you want to see it, uh, working. If you want to dig deeper into it, there is a free Bonjour browser uh, that you can install on the macOS uh, operating system, macOS 10.9, 10.10, and all the recent ones up to High Sierra. Um, it's uh, it's not open source, but it's free software, and you have the the link uh, to the the homepage here, and it will enumerate. It will browse all the uh, machines that have multicast enabled. Uh, in the network, and it was, will also show you the services that are uh, offered by these machines. On the command line on the macOS system, there is the command DNSSD. It can also be used uh, and uh, for querying multicast addresses with DNSSD uh, minus uppercase G V4, uh, and then the name of a uh, of an MDNS host, we can do forward name resolution. So we see here that box.local has the IP address 172.22.1.8. Uh, we can do the same for v6 and also v4 and v6 combined. And then we get the IP addresses for both protocols back. Uh, DNSSD can also be used to query all the other kind of DNS resource records like uh, TXT records, MX records, SRV records. So here's an example querying for the quad A record showing the IPv6 data. That is done with DNSSD minus uppercase Q as a parameter. Then the name of the, the domain name of the machine in, in question, the record type, and the uh, networking class. There might be machines on your network that are unable to run multicast DNS themselves, like some Internet of Things devices, some older computers, some unsupported systems. 
And this can be made available on the multicast network via a proxy service. This shows how to create a proxy service on a Mac with the DNSSD command. Uh, usually all the implementations uh, implement also such a proxy server. You can also do that on Linux with Avahi or on the BSDs with uh, MDNSD. Um, here I'm uh, publishing uh, for my trusty old Mac SE 30, which is now 25 years old, um, uh, a Telnet service on port 23 under the name of macse30.local and the IP address 192.0.2.10. And once that is um, published, other machines can uh, enumerate the name, can resolve the name. So that was multicast DNS, and now we look at the Linux side and the um, uh, pop most popular implementation for multicast DNS on Linux is Avahi. There are two other implementations which are, are less popular. Um, so Avahi is a multicast and DNS service discovery subsystem developed by Leonard Pertering and Trent Floyd. It's the same Leonard Pertering who works nowadays at Systemd. And it's licensed under uh, the library GPL. And so it can be linked even to, um, to proprietary uh, tools. And it's the most feature-rich rich multicast DNS implementation. It's even more feature-rich than the Apple implementation. And it has been ported to the BSDs, uh, even to Mac OS X, even though Mac OS X has its own implementation and Solaris and Illuminus. The work started in 2004, and the reason there was because the MDNS respondent that was um, provided by Apple had a license that was incompatible with the GPL, which is used by the majority of Linux software. Uh, homepage of Avahi is uh, avahi.org. And if you are curious where the name comes from, seems uh, that is a, a name of a species living in Madagascar. It's a lemur. Uh, it's a, so a small kind of monkey that lives there. And the, the uh, icon they have, or the, the mascot, is also the, that monkey. Uh, the Avahi system is installed and enabled on many popular Linux distributions. You can get it on Ubuntu, Fedora, Linux Mint, Debian, uh, and all the others. Uh, and most of the time, if you install a full installation with desktop, it's already there and enabled. The, the main workhorse of Avahi is the Avahi daemon. And uh, that needs to be running, and it is being configured in uh, it, Etsy, avahi, avahi-demon.conf. And uh, there you can specify the name to be published of your machine. If you don't provide that name there, uh, the host name is being used. We can configure whether IPv4 or IPv6 should be used, and uh, if uh, the host info information should automatically be populated, meaning the operating system and uh, the um, um, architecture of the machine. Publishing the workstation record enables anyone from the outside to enumerate the machine, uh, meaning outside, meaning in the same not network, not from the internet outside. And in some cases, even uh, um, make an SSH connection if SSH is, is running. Uh, also with Avahi, the same with uh, DNSSD, we can publish other uh, IP addresses um, for machines that don't host multicast DNS themselves. Uh, there is a file called Etsy Avahi Host, and the format is the same as in Etsy Host. We have in the first column the IP addresses, in the second column the names. The names in the Etsy Avahi Host must always end in .local, because it's open only for the uh, uh, multicast DNS service. And all the IP addresses and names being published there will also being sent out if uh, a query comes uh, for any of these IP addresses or name. So an, a Linux machine with Avahi installed can act as a proxy for other machines that don't have the multicast DNS functionality. So a little demo here. This is from uh, a video from an Ubuntu machine. Um, that I recorded earlier today. 
So here I'm installing um, Avahi Daemon and Avahi uh, Utils on this Ubuntu machine. And then with systemctl enable, uh, now I'm both enable this service and start it at the same moment. So now I check if the system, the, the Avahi daemon is really started. And yes, it's active running. There are no error messages. And it has uh, registered this machine under the name of ubuntu.local. And now I try to resolve um, a different machine, which is an OpenBSD machine uh, running on the same network called uh, Yilong. And resolving a multicast DNS name with Avahi goes with uh, Avahi resolve. And then either minus N for the uh, name or minus A for the address. So we that worked here. The IP address of yilong.local is 172.22.188. And if I look in the nswitch.conf, which is for the uh, uh, name resolution services available on Linux, we see there it first looks at the files which Etsy host, and then it looks for MDNS4 minimal, meaning multicast DNS over IPv4. Uh, and uh, in, a, in a minimal installation, meaning I can also use any other tool uh, that does regular DNS lookup, like the ping command, to resolve um, multicast DNS names. So that works now in all applications on that Linux machine. Here I'm resolving an IP address back to a name. So it's minus A, not minus R. Um, and we see here the information that for this IP address, the name of the machine, the remote machine, is yilong.local. So that was Avahi. Then there's MDNS Responder, which is the open source implementation of uh, MDNS for Unix and Linux. Uh, also for uh, Windows and uh, VxWorks. Um, Apple provides this as a reference implementation. It includes both the source for multicast DNS and DNSSD, and it's directly based on the multicast DNS responder that is part of the macOS. Um, the source code is free. It's under an Apache license, meaning it's a free software, can be used even in commercial products. And it, it is being used, for example, in a lot of printers, because almost all printers nowadays, they implement multicast DNS, so that multicast DNS-enabled machines can find a new printer on the network. This quote code has been ported to Linux, uh, to the BSDs, and to Solaris. But the MDNS responder has a fewer features than Avahi, and is somewhat harder to configure, uh, so uh, most people on Linux or on the BSDs, they uh, prefer to, to use Avahi and uh, they skip MDNS Responder. But, but I've found this, uh, this nice blog post, which is not too old, um, uh, describing how to share files on, uh, to macOS from a free BSD machine with uh, Samba and uh, an MDNS service discovery. So on the... <coughs> Sorry, on the BSD side, we have OpenMDNS, which is an implementation of MDNS coming from the OpenBSD people. And it has been ported to the other BSDs and even to Linux. Uh, it's more lean uh, as Avahi and MDNS responder. And as always, that comes from the OpenBSD project. There's a high security. A configuration is not done by a configuration file, but uh, by a CLI command called mdnsctl. And the website uh, is here, um, hasbert.org open mdns. And I also have a small demo, how that looks like. So I'm here on the open BSD. 
And there I have the MDNS daemon running, which is a lean and small piece of software. And I'm using MDNS CTL to look up the name of the Ubuntu machine that I've installed uh, in the previous video. And we can see it comes back with the uh, IP address of that machine. I can also do reverse lookups with our lookup, putting in the IP address of a machine and then getting back the host name. With MDNS CTL browse, I can browse all the services of all the machines that are in the local network. And this is the list of all the machines uh, here in my network. And the third video that comes just now uh, shows how to um, how I use multicast DNS on both the uh, the OpenBSD machine, which is on the upper part of the screen now, <coughs> and I'm now splitting the screen. And on the lower part, I'm logging into the Ubuntu machine, and I will start there the. Uh, uh, DNSSD by just putting in a service file, which is an XML file, to the Avahi directory at C Avahi services. And I'm putting in there a new file called ssh.service, creating that with a text editor. Now I'm pasting in the definition of that service. That's an XML, but that's an easy XML. It has a description. It has the service um, part, which is uh, built like an SRV record, underscore SSH dot underscore TCP. And it advertises port 22, which is the port where SecureShell works. And now I have saved the, um, the, the file and immediately Ubuntu with SSH appears in the browsing list on the uh, uh, OpenBSD machine and would, would, would also immediately appear and being available for all the other multicast enabled machines in my network. So that is instantaneous. And now I'm opening here the terminal application on macOS and the terminal application has the function new remote connection and uh, that has this chooser here. I click on secure shell. I see Ubuntu SSH in there. I click on connect and I don't need to know the IP address or anything of that machine. I can just select the name of the machine and make a connection. And here I am connected to the remote machine just by the virtue of MDNS. So having MDNS in the network is really, really convenient, especially if that is combined with uh, DNS services covery. Now systemd, uh, systemd is a relatively new system management uh, software for modern Linux systems. It's Linux only. And uh, what I'm talking here about systemd covers version 234, older versions might have less functionality. Um, systemd offers uh, a broad kind of service like system startup, where it takes over the responsibility of the old init system. It has container management with systemd and spawn. So it does things like Docker do. Um, it does logging with the journal D. So it uh, does things like our, our syslog or syslog ng. It does network configuration with systemd networking D. So it is a replacement for network manager or wicked D. And it does name resolution with systemd resolve D. So it's also a replacement for unbound and bind and uh, all the name resolution systems we have there. And it's also doing DHCP and all the other stuff that you want from a Unix system. Uh, we are looking here at systemd resolve D. And that is an integrated name resolver for a Linux system. It does normal DNS, including DNSSEC validation, which is cool, I think, because that brings DNSSEC to the end host. Uh, it does link local multicast name resolution, which is the Windows version of multicast name resolution. And it also does the multicast DNS, so it speaks the Apple style or the ITF standard style multicast DNS as well. And it uh, syn synthesizes local names su such as gateway. So it, uh, if you ask um, 
uh, systemd resolve d enabled system for the name of gateway dot it will tell you the uh, default route uh, that will change with version 235 and upwards um, there the name will be underscore gateway um, because uh, to, to prevent collisions because it can be that um, someone will get the, the real top level domain gateway in the internet at some point of time. So this is how systemd resolve D is intended to work. The libc stop resolver at the bottom here that is sending queries to the IP address uh, loopback address 127.0053 port 53 that is where systemd resolve D is listening and systemd resolve d is then branching either to link local multicast name resolution or to traditional dns or to multicast dns on port 5353 in order to uh, use systemd resolve d uh, the etsy resolve.com file must point to 127.0053 address and um, this can be easily done by linking the provider template file uh, that is in libsystemdresolve.conf to etsyresolve.conf. Make sure that you have a um, backup copy of your original resolve.conf before doing this. And with systemd236, which is currently in the making, uh, that systemd provider template file will move to run systemd resolve because it will be dynamic and will have a dynamic search path that uh, will be built from the search path information received from DHCP. So the file at cresolve.com should not be managed by either the DHCP client, DNSSEC trigger, network manager, or WicketD, uh, as these services will overwrite uh, all the systemd uh, changes. Um, best is, of course, to configure any of the above to not touch at cresolve.conf. But if you don't know how to do that, or if you are just lazy like me, uh, there's a quick but ugly fix. Uh, you can make at cresolve.conf immutable with a change attribute plus i, uh, and then the file to make it immutable. That sets the uh, extended attribute, uh, the immutable extended attribute, and that prevents anyone, any process, any user on the system to make changes to that file, including the root user and including all processes that have root access. Uh, the only way to make changes to this file again is to remove the immutable flag, and that will be done with change attribute chattr minus i, and then the file name. So the resolve D configuration for systemd resolve D lives in Etsy systemd resolve D.conf. And with DNS stop listener equals UDP, we can make systemd resolve D listen on uh, the loopback address. We can configure uh, fallback DNS. And if uh, no that, that fallback DNS is being used if no DNS resolves are received via DHCP or IPv6 um, um, router advertisement. And if no fallback DNS um, is configured and no DNS resolves are received by DHCP, then the uh, Google public DNS servers are being used, the 8.8.8.8, .8 because they are compiled in, in systemd directly in the source code. So we configure the search domains for single label names in queries. We can enable multicast DNS. We can enable, can enable link like link local multicast name resolution here. Uh, we can say we want to have DNSSEC and we can have local caching, which all uh, makes the DNS name resolution faster. And then we make sure that systemd resolve D is active and running. And in, on some modern Linux systems like uh, Fedora 27 or the latest Ubuntu, um, there is systemd resolve D already present and enabled by default. In order to do name resolution on the command line, there comes systemd resolve as a command line tool with systemd. 
and that can be used to create all DNS, link local multicast and resolution and multicast DNS. So here, this is a request for Windows 7 PC, and Windows 7 PC has no multicast DNS, it just answers with uh, LLMNR over IPv4, and that is uh, printed out here by System Resolve D. We can also enforce multicast DNS name resolution with minus P for protocol and then MDNS, Mac Mini 3.local, and that gives back the IP address of that machine. We can also query the status of the uh, systemd resolver, or that is systemd resolve D, that lists all the DNSSEC uh, negative trust anchors, <coughs> meaning domains where DNSSEC validation will not be done, which are mostly uh, locally used top level domains. And it will also tell us uh, if we have multicast DNS. Uh, link local multicasting is working on on the interfaces. <coughs> Sorry, and we can get statistics like cache size, cache misses, cache hits, and how many secure DNSSEC validations have been done. <coughs> <coughs> so, and then we have Windows 10 and Bonjour for Windows. Windows 10 already, and that is the latest Windows 10, uh, which came out in uh, September, which is the, the fall creators update. That already has some limited support for multicast DNS and DNS services covery. Uh, today, it is used by Windows uh, to find the nearest printer that also supports multicast DNS and DNSSD. But um, it cannot be used these days, <coughs> sorry, to uh, resolve any other host that is multicast DNS enabled. In the same Windows 10 version, there is developer mode. Um, and if you um, have developer mode enabled and uh, you also enable device discovery, then your Windows 10 machine will respond to multicast DNS queries for its own name. So it then is visible from all the Linux and Mac machines out there. If you want to have the full multicast and DNSSD function on Windows, um, Apple offers Bonjour as an extension <coughs> for Windows 7 and 8 and 10 um, that can be installed. Uh, it's part of Apple products for Windows, uh, namely iTunes for Windows, QuickTime for Windows, and the Bonjour print service for Windows. Uh, if you neither have iTunes or QuickTime, uh, then installing Bonjour Print Service for Windows is the, the smallest and uh, leanest way to get multicast DNS on Windows. Uh, it's a uh, simple installer. It's uh, available for free on the URL we have here on the slide. And once that is installed, um, it can be used. Um, it works also with all applications. So it works from uh, browsers, from the command line, ping and all that just works. You can even later uh, remove the Bonjour print services from the apps and features uh, um, command uh, panel and just keep the Bonjour part open or installed. And you see Bonjour is just one megabyte, 1.06 megabytes, so it's very lean. It doesn't take much resources. So the conclusion from all the local name resolution protocols we have seen in the webinar series, multicast uh, multicast DNS or MDNS is the most universal available. And it is an ITF standard. Uh, for example, the upcoming home network control protocol, which is uh, RFC 7788, does support and does use multicast DNS. And home network control protocol will be implemented in all the home routers and home equipment and IoT devices coming out in uh, the next years. It is a protocol that is uh, created to make um, automatic configuration of multiple subnets in um, in, in a home network uh, seamless and uh, zero configuration. So it is just plug and play and nobody needs to think about routing protocols and uh, default routes and all that and firewalls. Uh, home network control protocol does that automatically and it does it by using multicast DNS. 
So that concludes our webinar today. Uh, just uh, let me tell you that in 2018, next year, we will still have uh, more DNS uh, and DNSSEC trainings. We have plans to um, have a US East Coast training in February. Then in April, we will be in Europe with our training offerings. Then May, we'll uh, have a training on the US West Coast. And June, we are back in Europe. And especially in Germany, I will be giving trainings there in March, April, uh, June, August, uh, with the DNS and Bind three day trainings and the two day DNS security trainings. So, this is the end of today's webinar. Hope you enjoyed that. Paul, do we have any questions? There were no submitted questions, so uh, I guess you covered everything in uh, in great depth. I do want to share with anyone if there are any questions after maybe review the uh, review the recording and do have any questions, you can feel free to email us. Uh, you can either email Karsten at Karsten at meninmice.com or support at meninmice.com with any related questions. Yes. Right. So if there aren't any, and without any further ado, I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance. And again, this is recorded, will be posted, and all attendees will receive a copy as well. Yeah, the next webinars will be next year. So I take this opportunity to wish everyone uh, a nice holiday season and a good new year 2018, and see you back then. Good to see you all. Thank you again.